Good morning, everyone. Those of you on Zoom, good morning. You're welcome to our class for today. We'll be looking at project execution. Uh, my name is Architect Solomon, and I will be taking you through the project execution part today. Those of you in class, good morning once more. So let us begin. Are we ready? So by way of recap, by way of recap from your project management training so far, you have been told that there are 10 knowledge areas in managing a project, right? And we also introduce to the stages that is involved when it comes to managing a project. You still remember the initiation, the planning, the execution, monitoring and controlling, and of course, closure. Awesome. So today, you were also told that um, you have 49 processes scattered around these stages. Not so. And in initiation, you have two processes. In planning, you have 24 processes. So today we'll be looking at execution. So let us begin. This one you share. So we say once your project plan is ready, once your project document is set, it means you are good to go in terms of executing your project. That is to say, your plan is ready. So you are about to start your project. What do you do? You look back to that plan and you begin to execute your project. So as you begin to execute your project, things will be unfolding themselves. And as those things are unfolding themselves, you'll be looking for a way to resolve them. Now in execution, we have 10 processes. But I urge you to pay attention to these three key areas. In all the processes, we have input, we have tools and techniques, and finally, we have the output. What does that mean? The input is what you do. The tools and technique is what you use to do what you want to do. And the output is the result. Is it understood? So it's very, is it understood? The input, what you do in execution, what tools are you using? And finally, what is the output? What is the result? For example, you want to make rice. What do you need? What do you need to do? What do you need to do? Boil water, fine. What tools do you need to use? Good. What will be the out the output? What will be the result? Is it understood now? Is it understood now? Yes. Good. All right. So we have ten processes. Those of you joining online, you're welcome. So I will be briefly be explaining these processes, and that um, includes the input. That is what we need to do. So looking at those ten processes, um, if you don't mind, let us highlight them together. The first one is what. The second one is what? The third one is what? The fourth one is what? The fifth one? The sixth one? The seventh? The eighth? The ninth? And finally, what does it mean to direct and manage project work? Simply put, it means you need to supervise. 
just supervise. That's what it means. But then you are supervising. Who are you supervising? You're supervising your team, your team members. And when you're supervising, you need to ensure that whatever they are doing, they are doing it according to the plan. So understood. So the project before us is, I need this, I need uh, 50 chairs in this class. I need five, five paros. You are my team members. And I said, look, I, I, I named this place the group A, group B, and group C. And when I come in the morning, I've given the instruction, arrange five, five seats in a row. But when I came, I saw three, three chairs. What am I supposed to do? I'll tell them, right? That's what it means to supervise. So the next one, manage project knowledge. In your projects, in execution of your projects, there are informations that you need in order for you to successfully carry out that project. So those information, where do you get them? You get those information online. Remember you have a project, exactly. Remember you have a project plan. Remember you have the documents. So there are informations there, not so. And you can also consult people who are experienced. Not so, either within the organization or outside the organization. So those informations, people who are experienced, you need to find out those information from there. And that is where we, 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 we come in and say expert judgment. Acquire resources. What does it mean? In all of your projects that you are going to do, there are things that you need. What are resources? I know you have discussed about it. What are resources? Let me give you a clue. There are three things. Exactly. Thank you very much. Labor, material, and equipment. So how do you acquire them? What do you need to do? So at the point of execution, if you plan to use 10 people, that is the point where you get them. If you plan to use any machine, that is the point where you get them. If you plan to use any material at all, at the point of execution is the point where you need to get them. Are we following? I'm just briefly explaining them, we'll dive into it um, as we progress. Then number four is to develop the human component of your team, that is to develop team. What does it mean? What does it mean to develop team? Some of your team members may be lacking in competence in some areas, the ability to do, perform some activities. So what do you need to do? You need to create a platform for them to be able to learn. I'll give you an example. Back in 2011, I was employed to work as a legal clerk in a law firm. And when I got to that office, I just finished my computer training there. And I was given a manuscript to draft. I think it was a court case about divorce. I wasn't too familiar with the legal te uh, terms and the handwriting eh? although it was better than doctors. Yes, but I managed to type. But whatever I was typing, whatever makes sense to me was what I was typing. You understand? So at the end of the day, when I finished typing everything, one of my superior came and said, oh my God, what have you done? It's even better I typed the whole thing. So she ran in sort of me, say all sorts of things. But when my boss came, she was like, see, look, but when I don't have problem with people who are trying to adapt, but are you willing to learn? Are you willing to develop? So she gave me an atmosphere for me to work at my own pace. And I tell you, one year down the lane, she said, if Godwin is not in this office, I will run into trouble. Do you guys understand? So you need to create, you need to give an atmosphere where your team members will be able to learn. In fact, because of that, as a result of her giving me a free atmosphere, 
whenever she comes to the office, she usually tells me, go to my car, get me eye pencil. When I go to the car, before I get to the car, when I search the bag, you know women bag has plenty of compartment. You can have 50 million there, you don't know. So when I check, at the end of the day, instead of eye pencil, I'll go and bring pencil. She will say, no, God will return it. But whenever she now sends me to her bag, after that time, when I get to the car, I carry the whole bag. I take it to her. She finds what she wants to find. What has she done to me? She has made me to also think. Because running stairs up and down is not a smart way of working, not to. So as a project manager that you are, you need to give that atmosphere. You need to give that space so that your people will be able to develop themselves, their skills in any activities you have given them for them to carry out. Now, work close with your individual team members. What does it mean? It means you need to provide relevant support for them because they will need it. You need to work with them. Once, once they need, once, once they, are, they are at a point of they need support from you, you'll be able to provide that support. So what, working with individual of your team members, it involves working close with them every time. Then you'll be able to know the areas that they need help, then you provide that help. And the sixth one is conduct procurement, right? Now, in every of your projects, it is not only you that will do it. Do you understand? It's not only you that will do it. Let's assume you're making cake. Will you be the one to produce the floor? Will you be the one to produce the egg? So you need to get these things from other people, right? So if you're making cake, other people will come. Even at the point of you finishing that cake, what happens? You may either send it through dispatch rider, not so. So these are people you can use. And we also have techniques, tools we can use in conducting procurement as we move ahead. Number seven is manage communication. What does it mean? It means you need to generate work performance data. You need to generate work performance data. Data about what? Remember, we are in execution. And one of the things we said in execution is as we are executing our project, things will be coming up. And as those things are coming up, we'll be dealing with them as they come. Sorry. So whichever method you want to use in managing your communication, it can be weekly, it can be daily, it can be monthly, but you need to send out this information. And what we say, what we say work performance data, it means what are the progress you are making? Uh, for example, if you want to fry akara, you first of all peel the beans, right? Not so. Once the beans is peeled, you take it to the machine. The machine grinds it to the very pace that you want. Is this in that same state? Is it still in that same state? So it has progressed. So we need a report as you make progress. So those information, for example, if you are a site manager, you work in the site, you're an architect, you're a builder, you will understand that at the first point, you need to excavate, not so. Once you excavate, you do what we call DPC level. Before you know, you start seeing building going up. Those are progress. So as you are making those progress, please tell us. Tell us how far you have gone. So that is what we refer to as work performance data. So number eight is to what? What is number eight? When you were planning, you talk about risk. Not so. So in your projects, you might even have experts that will come. Okay, I want to make this folder. What are the risks involved? I want to bake. What are the risks involved? 
I want to build a house. What are the risks involved? So you analyze all these things. And what do you do? You provide the response to them. I will tell you, I will give you an example. We're doing, we're managing a project in life cam, condominium, four floors. And we had a certain consultant that we have used in the previous phases because we had phase one, phase two, and we're in phase three. And consultant, how many of you know what consultant is? Consultant is like a reservoir in the toilet. Those that small compartment where there's water. But this time it's embedded into the wall, so you don't get to see it. So after your business, you just press and you see water coming out. So the consultant that was used in phase one and two, they were hoping to use that same consultant in phase three. But when we got to phase three, that particular consultant were no longer in the market. So what happened? The same techniques, the same tools we we're using to mold or to, to, to build the blocks for the consultant, we have already gone ahead to build it that way. So when the consultant now came, they had to start breaking the wall again to insert the consultant because the method of techniques has changed. So during that process of breaking, some of the block fell on the people who were breaking it. And I think one of them got injured and he was hospitalized for like two, two months or so. Yes. So what was our risk response strategy? Now we decided to change the techniques. What did we do? Instead of just building the wall, the dwarf wall, the honeycomb wall, we now begin to key it into the other existing wall. So when they now break, it doesn't fall easy. So your project that you are doing, analyze those risks. Look out for those risks and implement with response. And the next one is to manage quality. Is what we refer to as quality assurance. What's the difference between managing quality and quality control? What's the difference between managing quality and quality control? Yes. Yes, quality control, yes. Okay. So we can also refer to it as quality assurance. Now, when we say control, as you are executing your project, you are checking for errors. And immediately you see those errors, you correct them. Quality assurance, when you are now done, you now go back to the plan and check. Is this one correct? Yes. Is this one correct? Yes. Is this one correct? Yes. Is it okay? Is it clear? No, no, no. Quality control and quality assurance. They are two different things, yes. Is it understood? Then the last one is to manage stakeholders' engagement. Now, how do you carry your stakeholders along? How do you ensure that their concerns does not become an issue? So now let's begin. The main question now, number one, direct and manage project work. You know, we're just introducing. Now, the main question is, what really happens during project execution? What really happens in project execution? Now, there are activities that happen. Now, remember we said, look out for three things. The input, the tools and techniques, and of course, the what? The output. So now, what really happens? If you look at your, yes, skip page one of your manual, activities to direct and manage include what, but not limited to, one is to perform activities to accomplish the project requirements. The second one is what? So those are the results, the small, small results you'll be generating as you make progress in your execution. And number three is to what? Very good. And number four is to what? Very good. Number five is to implement the plan method and standard. And number six, establish, manage projects. 
Botswana. And number seven, you generate project data such as cost, schedule, Good. So, like I said before, at some point in your project, there will be need for you to make changes as you make progress, yes. There will be need for you to make changes. So on what basis will you be making changes? On what basis will you be making changes? Flip to page two of your manual. So there are three things that will actually make you to make changes in your project. And one of them is the corrective, yes, corrective action. What does it mean? It means as you are working, as you are executing your project, you begin to see that, oh, so there are some things that may not work. So what will you do? You correct it. And the second one is what? Preventive action. It could be that as I'm doing my work in my project, I'm also forecasting and seeing the trend of things. For example, you have 10 days to execute a project and five days have gone. You have not done 50% of that work. Do you think you meet up? Do you think you meet up? So what do you need to do? You need to prevent, you need to bring in your prevention action and see how you can meet up with your project. So if there are change requests that you need to make, you quickly make that change request at that point. And number three is what? Defect repairs. We are all human beings, not so. We can make mistakes, not so. So this, those are another reason why you can make change requests. And finally, if you're making, if the, if the error is minimal, if it is not too much, as a project manager that you are, if it is within your capability, you can go ahead and make those changes yourself. Okay, those of you on Zoom, you can start sending in your attendance. You can send in your attendance. Now, what are the inputs, guys, for direct to manage project work? What are the inputs? We have project management plan. Now, look at it. Some of these inputs repeat themselves. They are almost similar. So we'll be jumping into when we get to new processes because it's the same. Look at it very well. So we'll look at this one. Then subsequently, we may be jumping there. We'll just go direct to the tools and techniques used, and of course, the output. So in the input for this, the project management plan comes in, the project document also comes in, the change log, the lesson you learn, and all that. Number three, you approve change requests. Number four, enterprise environmental factor, which is part of what you have discussed in the framework. And finally, the organizational process assets. So what are the tools and techniques that you need? Experts, judgments. Now, during your execution, what do we expect from you as a strategy? What we expect from you is for you to ask questions. Who are you asking? Exactly. Those people who have experience. I'll give you an example. What's your name, man? Chinaza. Chinaza has just graduated top of a class from a baking school. As a result of that, the Minister of Education decided to say, see, I'm giving you a contract. You'll be baking for me for the next 12 months. Now, Chinaza has a friend. What's your name, sir? Ada. Ada deals in all kinds of German cars. Mercedes, BMWs, name it. Chinaza also has a sister at home she has been baking for the past 20 years. Please, between these two people that Chinaza has, who will she go to? 
Why? Because her sister has the knowledge, the experience, and she has managed a lot of maybe events. But after Chinaza has made money from her contract, maybe 1.5 million for each baking she does, and she was doing it four times a month for the next 12 months. And Chinaza looked at herself. I don't think I should be riding Toyota again. I need luxury car. I need BM. I need Mercedes Benz. Who will she go to? Is understood, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next one is project management information system. You need to have a strategy of sending out your information. You can either have a WhatsApp group, you can have, maybe you can be hosting Twitter space, or you can have a Telegram channel where you pass this information. So whatever method of the information you're using, you really need to pass this information. And those information you are passing to your stakeholders are very, very important. So everybody is carried along. Another thing we do in, another tools we use in directing and managing our project, it's through meetings. Meeting is very important. It is why we come to meetings like this, that you'll be able to tell me, okay, these are the areas where I'm lacking behind. These are the areas where I need to improve and all. You understand? Now I also give you an example of one of the meetings we held in Life Camp during our project. And in that meeting, one of the person who was able to relate his experience was highlighting the importance of meeting. What did he say? He gave an experience that the sponsor of the project walked into the site and there was somebody who was working and meeting was ongoing. And the man met him and said, ah, meeting they go on now, why are you there at the work? And the guy was like, Oh God, now this I already tried doing for like one week. I won't try finish up. And that is how he called the project manager. He said, who is this guy? How much is his money? Pay him, let him go. Do you know why? Because in that meeting, that thing he's doing might have changed. So he's building on error. So it's also important that you have meetings. Meetings will help you to know how far your progress is going. If there are changes, sometimes you walk, you go to your office and you see that they have changed the office arrangement. But because maybe you are not around, you were not carried along, you begin to wonder, what's happening now? They don't move this one go here, they don't move this one go here, things like that. And even your various offices usually have meetings, not so. Maybe on Mondays, they'll just call, oh yeah, you people should call, we'll have meetings. You said, even in your house, right? So meeting is quite important. Meeting is important. So it's one of the tools we use in managing our project. So when your supervision work is ongoing, when your execution is ongoing, what do we expect? We expect result, not so. We expect delivery boost. Then we expect also work performance data. So you begin to generate data for us. How much you have spent, how long you have spent on the job, what and what. Are you, are you, are you still intact when it comes to the schedule? Or you are behind schedule? And we also encourage you to document every issue that you encounter. It is very important. Every issue you encounter and how you resolve it, it is quite important. So maybe as you are doing your work, you encounter an issue, what happened? You were able to resolve it. So you write that issue and you write how you were able to resolve that issue. So where you document such information is what we call the issue log. You see it there in your manual. And the next one is to make change requests. Is it not? Let's say your, your project, the budget for your project is 8 million. And along the line, you find out that you need to make changes. And that change you are going to make, it will affect costs, it will affect the delivery dates, and other factors. So what do you do? You apply for change requests, and that change request 
is granted. You understand? So the implication is that when maybe the additional cost for your change request that you want to make is 3 million. We had 10 million before, right, in the budget. So if you add 3 million to the 10 million, how much is it now? 13 million. But remember, you had a project charter. You had a plan. What is in the plan? So it means you need to go and update those documents. You understand? Now, let me give you a personal project that I had to make change requests. How many of us are core members here? How many of us are core members? Okay. So you'll be able to relate. So when I went to camp, I had an intention to go and look for a wife. Yes. The reason is because I marketed my training and throughout my lifetime in school, I didn't really have that time to socialize. So I said, camp is an avenue for me to find a wife. So when I got to camp, I happened to be one of the first people that got to camp. Yes. So you know, you know the normal routine now. Yes, you get it. So we went to parade. Everywhere was still scanty, but I was also scanning. You understand? So. That day, I was able to plot one or two graphs. You understand? Then I went home. The next day, we came to parade again. People have increased. The previous plan I had has been scattered. I had to start to strategizing again. I was doing that for four days. And it was not only me that had a project plan. Other people had projects to come and do. So, even the ones who I don't plot, some people don't plot them again. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I look at myself. I don't think this thing can work. How do you find wife in 21 days? It's possible. It's possible. But you remember, if you come to Abuja, the females are usually in higher numbers than the guys. You'll be confused at some point. Yes. So what happened? Yeah, done the you have done the project before. Yeah, so what happened? I had to change. Yes. I said, let me just make friends with these guys. Then later on, I'll look from one of those ones I've made friends with, and I'll marry from them. Does anybody care to know how that project is going? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know that song? I see the raw kitty kitty. I see the raw kata. And there's a new one now. Adulthood now scam. If you get it, you get it. If you don't get it. So in your projects, in your projects, as you make progress, there will be some changes that you need to make. And when those changes come, you just have to make it. So normally, you know, the organizational process asset would also be updated. You remember when you discussed about project organizational assets? Whereas maybe you, your, your, comp, your organization has a standard. You understand? You just go to that standard and just check. You understand? So now let's move to the next one. Direct and manage project knowledge. I've taken my time to explain the first process. I also take my time to explain the second process. Then we will speed up. Because I understand that you guys are still here to do your schedule, right? And you were supposed to start with that today. But the reason why we're not starting with that is because we didn't have much people like this as at when I began the class. So what does it mean to manage project knowledge? We, we now understand the input. The input still remains the same. So what are the tools and techniques? Like I said before, you need to take advantage of all the knowledge around you. Sometimes you have people in your project, your team members in your project. Some of them have done similar projects before. So they have experience. See, I think 
Mr. Mario has said it here. Don't let pride hold you back from asking information, even if you feel you are older than the person. Yes, you are the project manager. These guys are your team. All these guys have been managing projects, this same similar project for the past 15, 10, 20 years. Go to them. Ask them for their opinion. It is very important. You will see that it helps you to make your, prog your project way faster. So that is expert judgment and also knowledge management. So now what information do you think will be useful? What information do you need in executing your project? That is why one of the interpersonal skills we encourage you to have is active listening skill. You listen to people. When they talk to you, you listen to them because you're trying to find out information. If you're coming to ask me, ah, Oga, how do you want me to do this? And you keep talking, 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 talking. What do you think will happen? Will you get feedback from me? No, no you will not. Also, you need to also know how to facilitate discussion and have a very conclusive ending. You understand? You need to know how to facilitate discussion. Okay, the discussion is about what is the problem with this project? What do you think I can do? Hit it, go straight to the point, and you get the answer that you want. So you know how to have that conversation when it comes to working and executing your project. Your leadership skill is also important. Your ability to influence people, build social capacity. If you are in your service here, you have the opportunity. In your CDS, while in camp, you have made one or two friends. Not so. Yes. Mr. Amadi has said, you don't sit in a flight for five hours, six hours, and the person sitting next to you, you don't know the person's name. You did not say it. You yes. said it. See, it will be every guy when they try to talk to you, one shy like you. You understand? Some of them will be bringing business to you. And some of them will be maybe very, very useful to you in the future. You understand? So erase that mentality. Put it to one side. At least let the person talk first now. Abby? Make it talk. At least you now know the intention. You must also be someone who is politically aware. When I say politically aware, it does not mean APC, PDP, no. It does not mean Labour Party, no. In your various offices, there are people who cut the short. Not so. There are people who say, if not so, it will be, that's how it will be. Irrespective. Those are the kind of people you need to associate yourself with as a project manager, because you know why? As you are executing your project, a lot of things will be coming up. And you may have your ideas. Your team members may have given you some ideas. But because you know that maybe the board will not want to listen to you, what do you do? You meet that person that is very influential. You understand? So that person will not be able to help you in knowing how you can be politically aware in such cases. We also refer to it as diplomacy. In offices, we call it, call it boardroom politics. You understand? So, and of course, now the outputs. What are the outputs? Guys, what are the outputs? What is the result? There's lesson learned. Number two. Number three. Are you guys seeing it as we're making progress? Are you seeing it? Is it very clear? So please, even in other processes you have done, even in the planning, even in monitoring and controlling that you see do, watch out for these three things. It is just the process involves in changing the dynamics. The next one is to acquire resources. It means going out there to recruit a vendor. Yes. I have a project, and part of my project is to have an event in the International Conference Center. I am expecting 1,000 guests. 
I cannot just keep them seated for four hours, no refreshment. I'm the project manager, so they need refreshment. I don't, I don't, I don't make meat pie. I don't produce coal. I don't produce Fanta. I don't have a restaurant. So what do I do? Very good. So I begin to call Mama Cars. How far? I get, I get, I get functional for International Conference Center on the seventh of July. Please send me proposal. I'm expecting a thousand guests. My mama can't send. I place a call to Germany. I place a call to any other bill back and all. They all send proposal. I just choose the one I want to use. So as a project manager, during the acquiring process, you also need to negotiate, which is what I've just explained. When, you, when they send those three proposals as they call, you check the one that works for you, not so, and that's the one you go with. And you can still renegotiate it. So now let's look at the techniques and tools we can use. Of course, the input still remains the same. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? So what are the tools and techniques? It means when you want to acquire resources, there are people you need to talk to for you to make decisions. The MD, the CEO of your organization, you bring them together so that you begin to know the kind of strategy you want to deploy in acquiring your resources. So there are criteria that will guide you. One of them is the availability of that resources. Is that resources going to be available throughout the lifespan of our project? That is one. Because we don't want to get involved in a project and at some point we get stuck and there's no more resources. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. There's a project I was managing here in opposite Taj Bank along this road, um, Galaxy Backbone. You see the building, very big. What were we doing? We we're doing finishing. And what we had to lay on the floor was granite. So between my boss and the tiler, I don't know how they calculated, they gave a wrong square meter. And the granite is not made here in Abuja, the granite is in Kaduna. And you don't just go and buy the granite. You have to make an order, then it will not be produced before sending it. As soon as the tiler was working, we got to a point, the granite finished, and we have not covered our work. So in your project that you're doing, check, is that resource going to be available throughout the lifespan of your project? As you mean, the granite was in Abuja. It's very easy, just go, you get, and continue, not so. Exactly. Then number two, the location of your resources. I just made mention of it. The granite was in Kaduna. Is it easy to quickly make the order and the next day it comes? No. Are you confused? Where? No, we are talking about decision making, multi criteria decision analysis. We're analyzing. We have not got into interpersonal skill yet. Is it clear now? So under it, we have decision-making, all this. All these are decision-making. What I'm saying is, look, before you decide the kind of resources you want to use for your project, check for these three things. Ava availability of that resources, where is the location of that resources, and what is the cost implication? Is it understood now? Is it clear? So let's go back. So you check. Is that resources going to be in the, available in that your region, that geographical location that you have? You understand? Cost is also another criteria we consider when making decisions about acquiring resources we want to deploy. And also, you know, resources are also your team members, right? Remember, you acquired them. Now. One of the things you need to consider when you are getting your team members is their attitude. What kind of attitude do they have? Would they be team player? Or would they be working isolatedly? So those are the things you consider as well. 
You understand? So all these falls under the decision making between you, the MD, and the CEO. Now, interpersonal skills, which is number two. Are you following now? It's clear, Abby? So one of the interpersonal skills we encourage you to have when you acquire resources is your negotiation style. As a project manager, you have the right to negotiate the right kind of people, right kind of persons for your project. You have managed a project before and you know you have a team. You know when you have another project, it's just easy for you to call those guys. Those guys already know how you guys work, not so. But sometimes the sponsor may tell you, see, look, I have like three persons, I want them to join your team. Ah, see this equipment, see this equipment we have here. This is what you will use for the project. That material I still have in my store, that is what we will start with. If that is the case, we say it is pre-assigned. It's then your manual. Number three. If that is the case, we say it is pre-assigned. You can also manage your team members via the virtual communication channel. How many of us know this blue advert where the wife was at home with the baby and they made that call, the man was in the market and the man was filming the kind of meat he needs to buy. You have seen that advert? Those are methods of using virtual team to communicate with your people. And sometimes when you have your team members together, they have a way of learning from each other. And also they will rub minds. It's not everything they will come to you as a project manager. They might just meet their colleagues and say, see, look, how do you think I can do this? And it's way, way easy for them. In fact, one of the interpersonal skills that I want to develop for myself or that I've been planning to develop for myself is being proactive. Yes, my ability to discern. I have said that when I get married, I'll go to the village. In fact, in my compound, if I go to the village, I'll build a mini store. And I'll go to the village, I'll get these items, firewood, calabash, leave, and any other thing that I can get from the village. You know why? Because my wife, as she's pregnant, can wake up 3 a.m. and say she wants to eat jello fries made from firewood, <laughs> serve inside calabash. You understand? That's been proactive. I also learned how to fry eggs with red oil. Yes, pregnant women love it. You don't know. Yes? How do I know? Because I've been making research and I've been seeing it. And when you're making tea, to the guys now, when you're making tea, if you're making tea for your pregnant wife, they know that's why they are not talking. The women, they know. So you make three varieties of, I'll be making three varieties of tea the hot, the cold, and the warm. With different sugar level. I understand what I'm talking about. At this point, I'm expecting you people to do, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm not romantic enough. I don't try. <laughs> so what are the outfit guys? If you seek our resource is also always assigned. The project team has an assignment. There's a resource calendar. What happens? There's change requests. There's project management plan updates, resource management, cost baseline, and all of that. Now, let me explain. Let me explain what it means for the physical resource to be pre-assigned. Sometimes your projects, you may be having concurrent projects running. Please listen now. If you have not been listening before, listen now. In your project, one of the things we say is when you are doing, maybe when you, are, you have a project, one of the ways for you to manage costs or for you to make gain is not for you to increase your price. 
is for you to cut down costs. So if you have a concurrent project ongoing, these are what may likely happen. You may have maybe three projects and you as Deborah of that company, you have what you're providing for your organization. Now in each of those projects, you need, they need your attention. So there's what we call resource calendar. That resource calendar, all the materials, the tools, the equipment that is going to be used will be assigned. It's like a timetable. When we're in school, we have a roster for sweeping also, something like that. So if Deborah works in this project A, maybe this month, you don't see her there again. She goes to project B. And that's why sometimes when you walk into your organization, you see that some people have gone for assignment, not so. So if that is the case, we say your resource is subject to sharing. Do you understand? Okay, this particular is actually, okay. Now in your project, in your company, your company has projects running concurrently. So what we mean is one project is going on in Guzate, one is going on in Era 11, one is going on in Use Market. All of them are happening at the same time. Now, because we say that one of the ways for you to make profit is not for you to increase price, but for you to cut down costs. Now, the equipment you have will not be able to carry out those activities that are going on at the same time. So we look at your equipment, we look at your labor, we look at your material. We now say, okay, fine. We go to project manager A and say, see, look, when will this, for example, let's say maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a building project. When will this your mixer be ready? When we mix, how many of us know mixer? The one that mix concrete. Good. When will you not be casting? When will you not be using it? Okay, the project manager will tell you, okay, second week of July, I don't think I need the equipment. So that equipment now will not be assigned to, to project B for the second week of July. Then they'll ask project manager B, when do you think this mixer now will be available that you don't want to use it again? Then project manager B will tell C that, C, look, at the third week, of July, it will be available. What are you guys doing? As a project manager, what are you doing? So when situation happens like that, we say you are sub, your, your resource is subject to sharing. So have we been able to cut down costs? Yes. Will it, will it be good for you to just go and buy another mixer? Because when that project finish, you don't know when if you have multiple projects like that again. Is it clear? No, it does not mean. How many was the first one? Still have it in mind to cut down costs. Yes. But also, you can increase the cost as well. Exactly. The same thing we are saying. You know, if the project that is ongoing, there's a particular equipment that is not going to be useful throughout. It does not make sense you leave that equipment there when another project we have needs that equipment. So the, the, the resource collector is for you to schedule. You understand? Your company will now, now go and start employing somebody at that crucial moment when it is not every time your services are needed. Do you understand? So for example, you are in that project A and you just need to work two days and you are done and you're not doing anything. Is it not fair for you to come to project B? It is. So, but then I understand your question. When it becomes so tight, of course you can now increase. You can also decide to rent. Remember when you are acquiring resources, it's not everything you buy. There are some you go and rent. Even some of your team members, some of them are actually employed because of that project. 
And once that project is done, they are gone. They are not members of the company. They are, they are, they are just, we call them um, uh, uh, subcontractors in this uh, uh, place. You understand? But then, if it requires additional uh, uh, labor, additional equipment, additional material, of course, you can go ahead. Remember, when you were discussing about your planning, maybe you need 10 people in your team. And those 10 people, you look inside within your organization, and you're able to fetch six. You understand? If you go ahead and fetch more, what will happen? You will jeopardize the normal runnings of your organization. So you just need to recruit those people. And if you feel that managing costs is a way to go about it, you can also go and just go and rent those equipment, then after which you send them. Then maybe as you make progress, if you keep getting work or projects that needs you, that needs more equipment, then you can go ahead and say, okay, I think for the past two years now, I've been getting 10 projects in a year. So I think we can have six equipment and all that. Is it understood? The next one is to develop team. So part of what you do as a project manager is to develop your team. So you give them the opportunity for them to enhance their capability, for them to build up their skill. And one thing you must do, I will follow you. Hope you are not confused again. Are we together? So managing your team, one of the things you must do is to create an atmosphere, we have discussed about it before, is to create an atmosphere for them to develop themselves and so on. Now, that doesn't mean if your team are in different locations, you cannot manage them, no. We know of some people who are, in fact, for the past two years or three years now, people have been working from home, not to, what you just need to do is connect via Zoom and work is done. Some of you don't report to the office, is it not? But the advantage is when you have your team in one location, it really helps greatly. And how does organization recruit? How do they recruit? How do they train? When you are employed, they'll just give you database, say, take. They'll give you login password, go there, go and take your training. And some of them, when you are recruited, they, they mix you up with the older staff. So you learn from them. Those are one of the areas you can develop your team. So when maybe those six people that you have from your organization, they already know how you work. And as you employ new ones, what do you do? You mix up, you mix them up with the older staffs. So they might be with those other staff for two weeks, three weeks, two months. Those are one of the ways you can develop your team. Now, when it comes to developing your team, sorry, since there's the idea. Can we see the screen? Right. So when it comes to the phases of developing your team, these are the stages that it will go through. These are the stages that it will go through. The first one is what? Forming. The first one is what? Forming. What does it mean? It means you have called these people, you are in this project, can you guys see? You are in this project. So what usually happens at that point? Everybody is excited. Why are they excited? Because maybe in that project, there's incentive, there's going to be an allowance apart from the salary. There's a lot of things, benefit that comes with it. So everybody's rejoicing. Ah, okay, you make come, I make come, I did this project too. You understand? So as a project manager, what should you do at that point? 
It's for you to also embrace them. You also join them in celebrating. But at the same time, you need to let them know the reason why they are formed as a team. Then the second one is storming. What happens is storming. Your team members will begin to antagonize. Yes. You know, the project now before us is here. Everybody wants to be friends with procurement manager. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because they are the ones that get the resources. And you know, in this, our country now, once you are friends with the person who goes to buy the material, that means she a good day for you. I mean, so everybody wants to be friends with such person. And some people, maybe the procurement manager now is looking. This one, this one, they come to me, they come to me. I don't say they find something. I want to come and post and sign in my diary. Things like that. You begin to see people who you think may want to take your work. That's what happens in storming. Then in norming, there's a little bit of that selfish interest and understanding the fact that they are formed as a team because they need to carry out a project. So that selfish interest is no longer, a bit no longer there. You understand? So progressively, they will now begin to understand the reason why they are formed as a team. So it's a mixture of understanding what the project is and that selfish interest of me trying to get my own. And the next one is performing. Are we following? Are we together? The next one is performing. What happens at this point? Your team members are now beginning to collaborate. They are working together. They don't know the reason why they are formed as a team. So there's no point, the, there's no point to be having an enmity with anyone. And finally, we move to the last phase of the development, which is adjoining. That is closing of the project. Now, what happens in this stage? It's a mixture of feeling. Some people are excited, some are not excited. Remember, we recruited some people because of that project. And now the project has come to an end. It means they're out of job. Like the, like the contracts, the core members that are passing out next week have with NYC. They have paid them the Alawi yesterday. No more ala. Yes. You think all the core members are happy? That 3K is no longer common. So that kind of feeling. Yes, you are excited though that you have your certificate. But at the same time, you are not happy because the money will not be coming. So it's a mixture of feelings. You understand? So it's an example of what happens in a journey. And as, as a project manager, what do you do at that point? You begin to call your organization, the head of various head of department and say, see, look, our project is ending in two weeks time. Please, my team members that are staff of the organization, please begin to reassign them to other activities. You understand? So that's what happened. But then as a project manager, you need to pay attention to how you motivate your team during this time. You really need to pay attention. How do you motivate them for them to deliver your project? Remember, we're executing. We're executing what is in our plan. Now, we'll dive a little bit into psychology now. Yes. We remember the Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, right? He said the lower, this one is not in your manual, so don't bother. He says the lower needs has to be satisfied first before moving up. Am I correct? Psychologist, am I correct? So what are the lower needs? I have a team member. She likes fashion. She likes to attend party. She has a red gown, but she doesn't have to, she doesn't have, is it Bond Street? Okay. 
So she'll be looking for red hair to put. She'll also be looking for red, maybe red eyeglass, red pink lips, and all of that. Red shoe. And she'll be saying in her mind, this Saturday, you see that party will go work out. What this thing is saying, I see, look, if that my team member has not been eating very well, if on Monday she no see food, maybe Naole Gary, on Tuesday the same thing, she will not be thinking of those things. Because why? The physiology could be things like food has not been satisfied. Is it understood? So as a project manager, you know your team. We have told you, work close with your individual team members. That is the way you can motivate them. That's the way you will know what they need. Now, in this kind of situation, you know a team member that is struggling to eat and you provide, maybe you provide a very good allowance for he or she, and she's able to satisfy this need. What happened? That one is clear, not so. Such a person will do his work. Not so. Then the next one is, if that job is now secure, is now guaranteed, if the job is now secured, is now guaranteed, they can now move to the next one. Acceptance on the team. Have you guys noticed, whenever there's a new staff, whenever there's a new staff in the organization, they will first of all study the staff first. Is he the kind of person I want to associate with? You understand? They usually do it. People who are working in that organization before now, they usually do it. But look at it. Maybe because the person doesn't have car, the person jumps short to short to, not everybody will be relating with the person. But imagine they employ somebody and the person is very friendly. He drives BMW to the office. Everybody wants to be friends with that person. Not so class. So at this point, your team members will now begin to accept you. How many of us have heard that chicken song? When you did also, you go there on your own. You know that song? When you succeed, they will call you their own. They will call you more common. Not so. They will say, come here, you belong. So that is what the Maslow's hierarchy is saying. And before you know, you begin to have self-esteem, the kind of people you want to roll with and the kind of people you don't want to roll with. And actually, finally, self-actualization, what you want to fulfill, what you want in life. You understand? So at each stage of this, you need to know the psychological being of your team members. Your team member is staying in Maraba Yaya. You know, there's always hold of Abi. Has it changed? No. Then you allow your team member to you say, look, what I can do for you, make sure you are very early at work, but I will let you close by four. You understand? What have you done? What have you done? You have motivated such person. Your office closes by five, but you are telling the person to close by four because of the hold up. What have you done? You have motivated the person. You understand? So at every stage, you need to know the psychological being of your team members. You said, which one? The, the motivation? Yes, you can, yeah, no. Understand me, job security, the job is secure. You now have a job, you understand? And the job you have puts food on your table. So what are you looking for next? What are you looking for next? For your team to accept you, you understand? Because your job is secure. For your team to accept you. And once your team accepts you, and that is why you see them, they'll go out in every weekend, you see them snapping, you understand? Is it clear? Is it clear?
Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I, I understand. But that, that's not the security we are talking about. The security we are talking about is your job. Is about your job. Because you know how banks work. Banks don't keep their staff for too long, not so. Before you know, three, four years down the line, they'll tell you you are gone. They'll bring in new person. So if your job is secure, that's what we mean. It's not the normal security. You understand? There's also the hygiene theory. What is hygiene theory talking about? Let me just simply put it this way. There are some things that you need to have ready in your organization that just motivate people ordinary. If you walk in here this morning, to listen to this lecture, the project execution part, and when you came in, there's no chair for you to sit down. And you are all, stand, you are all standing, and I ask you, all of you, just remain like that. Anything when I talk, the entire year, follow year, for months. Not so. So he's saying that, see, there are some things you need to provide. There are some kind of relationship you need to have. If the weather was a bit, Hot and there's no fun, you will not be comfortable, not so. So this alone keep you motivated. Then there's also another one, um, the theory of X and Y manager. There are some managers that believe that, see, everyone in that my office, all of them are selfish. Yes. Now when are they come, when they don't say are they come, at that time you will see everybody, they are just. Has that happened to you? It has happened to you. Why? Why is it like that? Why is it like that? Your guy is not friendly. Let's put it that way. And there are some managers, ex-managers that says, why managers say, see, look, as I know they do, I trust them. They can do, they can do it. Do you understand? So this. These are the motivational theories behind when you are managing your team in these phases. So you need to understand them. And the kind of relationship you build with them, which is the interpersonal skills we have been talking about, will either make you manager X or manager Y. Okay. So the result is still the same. What is the input, guys? Project management plan, project documents, enterprise environmental factor, organizational process, assets. Are we following? So now, how do you develop your team? When you have your team members together, they have a way of learning from each other, not so. They will rub minds. So that's another strategy you can deploy. Another one is information technology. We talked about it. You can have a meeting via Zoom. Not so. We know, I know of some people who are in Nigeria, but they are earning in pounds. They are working in other country, but they are here. You understand? So you can still manage people like that through information technology. So you see company staff, they come together on Skype, on Zoom, Twitter space, to discuss about their projects. You can also use interpersonal skills to resolve, resolve conflicts. Remember, when you are managing your team, you'll be able to understand if there is conflict among them. If you are working with your team, they will, they will surely talk. They will tell you, I don't like what, what, what Mr. A is doing. Mr. B will tell you what Mr. A is doing, I don't like it. Mr. A will tell you what Mr. B is doing, I don't like it. So what do I do? You need to have interpersonal skills that you can use to resolve conflicts. Another thing you can use in developing your team is to have building team activities. 
These activities are non-working related. Look at your team members and tell them, oh yeah, everybody come to my house this Saturday. Then your house, maybe you have a small swimming pool, you have a small garden, then you bring radio, everybody begins to dance. You understand? You can decide to go to cinema, watch movies together. You can decide to play table tennis, you can decide to go for hiking. All these are non-working related activities. If you are doing this constantly, what do you think will happen if there's a project? Because you all understood yourself. So those are one of the ways you can develop your team. We can also develop our team by reward system. And when I say reward system, please don't always use single reward system. Nigeria is playing football and the federal government has promised that anybody that scored one goal, they will give him two million. You will see that during that match, the goalkeeper will want to come and score. <laughs> yes. But what if you say for each goal that you guys score, you get two million naira. So if you score four goals, you get eight. If you score five goals, you get ten for the team. What do you think will happen? They will work together. What's your name? Sharon. Shalom. Shalom is very dedicated to her work. She works, when she gets an instruction, she makes sure she carries it out at that point. So as a result of that, instead of Shalom closing at five, she closed at seven. As a project manager, I walked in and said, what, you're still here? So yes, sir, I'm still trying to finish up. So okay, fine. Then at the end of the month, her salary is 250,000. And I decided to say, see, look, for your work that you've been doing, I'm adding 15,000 around to you. But she, thought, she didn't keep it to herself now. She now discussed it with other of her colleagues. You will begin to see people that will not work from 9 a.m. that they resume. They will not do anything. When it now gets to around two, they will now start working. Then they will now close late, around eight. Yes. Turn your office to viewing, uh, football viewing center. At that point, we say there's eye service. So if you use that kind of reward system, you'll be having, your, if your office will turn to hotel, you'll be having people left over there. You understand? But what, what am I saying? Use a collective reward system. Don't use single reward system. Hey guys, this is the project before us this week. This is like the activities that we need to carry out this week. If you guys can finish before Thursday, Friday is for everybody stay in your house. What do you think will happen? Shalom that used to delay maybe an instruction. You will see Shalom, now. Send me my file. Make I do my own part. Because everybody wants to rest on Friday. You understand? So these are ways you can develop your team. Training is also important. Training is also important. That's number six. If you're looking at it, training is important. Just like this one. We tell you what you need to do not what you do in university where they ask you to go and crack your head. This is the procedure, do it. So sometimes in your organization, they want to train some people, they may say, okay, 10, maybe they want to send 10 people, maybe abroad to go and do this such training like this. But because the budget is way, way high, they may just send two people to go and do that training and those people will come back and retrain the rest. And when it comes to training, it does not necessarily mean you need to source it from outside. People in your organization, people who have been working for quite some time, 
can also train these people. So don't always look outside. It is important. We have said it here. I said in your projects, you may have people in your team who have worked on similar projects before and they have 10, 15 years, 20 years experience. Those ones can serve as those trainers to train the rest. Is it understood? Now, individual assessment reward system. There's what we call appraiser. Appraiser does not mean that we want to fire you. Remember, we're talking about developing your team. What's your name, sir? Abdul. I've been standing here for, is it up to an hour now? And I can say to Abdul, Abdul, tell me. I've been lecturing for the past one hour. What do you think? What areas do you think I can improve? What areas do you think I can develop myself? Be honest with me. You understand? So your team, your team member, or as a project manager, you can go to your team and say, see, look, do you think I'm doing it well? What areas do you think I can develop? The fact that you are doing that does not mean that they want to fire you. You are looking for a way for you to develop yourself. Because as time progresses, progresses, you keep on developing. Are we together? Yes, it does. It can also come in form of promotion. Yes. Then we also have meetings. Meetings can really be a very good vehicle for us to develop our team. We talked about it before. Now in meetings, look at it this way. In meetings, meetings gives you a bigger picture of how your project is going. I made an example before, group A, group B, and group C. And the, the project is, or the assignment is, or the activity is to arrange five chairs in this room, five chairs in this room, five chairs in this room. And we now met at the meeting. And I say, hey, how far? A says they have been able to arrange their chairs. I ask B, B say, ah, Oga, we never feed one. I ask C, C say they are done. Now it gives me a bigger picture of how the project is going. Then I can take some people from A, take some people from B, from C, please join B to continue the work. So that's what one of the things meeting does. So it is very good that you usually have meetings. Those are the tools and technique guys. Now manage team. What number is manage team? What number? Five, number five. In your project, there are factors that affect your project, such as inflation. Remember, maybe you have a project now, there's already a budget for it. And once you want to start acquiring resources for that project, what is on the budget can no longer get it. You understand? Environmental factors, organizational process assets. You have done one project before, you have done another one, now you are doing another one. You will now update the one you are doing. Is it clear? So now, when you want to do projects similar to that, you just go and carry one of those documents. I think he explained it, but he did. Now manage team. It's more like working close with your individual team members. So you provide the support as they may need it. So working close with them, you'll be able to know who is performing, who is not performing. Otherwise, you have some team members who are loofing around. What do we mean by loofing? I've been giving you guys group work back in school and there's one of Basilius person among your group. Hmm? You just say, Shabi, I can't for saying Sabia. I don't know that you can. Make it do. 
How much will go contribute? Some people don't, they'll just pay. Then the day of presentation, or the day of to submit the assignment, you understand? The rest people, they did not do anything. Now, the effort will not show because a lot of people are putting so much effort in it. So if one person is not doing, you will not know. But as a project manager, what are we saying? If you work with each of your individual team members, if you work with them, you'll be able to know the areas where you can support them. Because if you have a group work and it's only your car for that is doing it, rest be assured, the rest of the people don't know jack about it. So now as a project manager, and I decided not to call a car for, and I call another person out of that group, eh, hey, come hey, on. This one, this is what they do. Well, I don't reach. You begin to see, hey, now come for they do everything. <laughs> so as a project manager, don't allow such. Because it will not be noticed because it's a group work. You understand? So now let's look at the input. What we need to do? The input still remains the same. What are the tools and techniques? Change requests. So when you observe one or two things, when you are when you are managing your team, you may observe that there are conflicts among them. So what do you do? Your interpersonal skills we need to come in. How you resolve conflicts. And now, when you are resolving conflicts, the best way to go about it is what we call withdrawing and avoiding. Shalom. loves it when instruction is given to her, it is carried out immediately. But before Shalom gets that instruction, it comes to me first. And me, I'm the kind of person that if instruction comes, I'll be looking at it. Maybe if it's close to the deadline. And I'm like, hey, Shalom, come take it. See, so easy. What have I done? What it means is avoiding or withdrawing, what it means is whatever I know that will cause problem between me and her, don't do it. That is withdrawing and avoiding. Is it understood? So you need to be proactive. You need to use emotional intelligence. Smoothing and accommodating is another interpersonal skills we can use. We will need to focus on areas where we have common agreements. I like delaying work, yes. She likes doing her work very fast, but I still deliver. So I will look at that delivery as the point where we have common ground. So instead of me saying, she's too overzealous, everything she wants to do sharp, sharp, I will not look at that aspect. Instead of she looking at me and saying, this one, you like delay work, she will not look at that aspect. She will look at the aspect of that we deliver at where do you so that is us have looking at the areas where we have common agreements that's what we refer to smoothing and accommodating is it understood we also have compromising and reconciling a situation where you have a win-win i am fighting with abdul we reported ourselves to the project manager. Our manager is telling us, see, okay, don't worry, don't offend you, let them go. Okay, you say if you lose, let them go. Or I can also make an example of people who maybe their car collides on the road and you see them, they'll come down and say, do you know who I am? Do you, who, do you, who are you? You understand, things like that. But if you look at it, if everybody should go, they'll be able to fix their damages. That makes it easy. Nobody is dragging case. Lawyer is not involved. Not so. So that's what we're saying here. So you need to forego some things. Let it go. ASU and federal government. Go go help them. How many of us know the Abano supermarket that got burned some time ago, somewhere in Lokogoma? Yes, that building 
I'm citing an example of a win-win situation now. That building was there for like six months. I don't know, I can't remember when that incident happened. Was it this year or last year? Last year. Now, if you notice, at some point, you see some people with big hammer, they were hitting the leftover structure and removing the reinforcement. If you notice, that's what happened. Now, instead of them to carry bulldozer and bring down the whole thing, they call these guys, say, look, break down this building, take the reinforcement. The reinforcement means the ions that is used to build the house. And do you know how costly reinforcement is? Because Ebano is not going to use it for their next construction, so there's no point. So break down this building, take the iron, and we have a cleared site. So it was a win-win situation. So Ebano is not spending money in collapsing the building. And they are not using the iron. So they use the iron now as a place for the wall for those breaking it. People will understand. Is it clear? Now, forcing and directing. Okay, guys, I'm the project manager of this project. This is what is going to happen. I don't want to hear anything anybody has to say. This is what I've said. That is how it will remain. If I do this, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm using what? And sometimes we can do collaboration and solving problem. I can come to you and say, see, look, how can I resolve this issue? I'm the project manager, yes, of course, but I'm still looking for your opinion as my team member. At that point, we say we are collaborating. Not so. So in managing your team, you'll be faced with a lot of decision making because a lot of people will be coming to you. And as a project manager, you are used to people coming to you and resolving their pro problems. So you need a lot of emotional intelligence. You need your influencing skills in order for you to be able to, re to resolve things like this. Your leadership skills, this is where it comes to play. You understand? So when you're making decisions, you must make decisions that will not be counterproductive at the end of the day. So that is why we have all these tools, expert judgment, information technology system, for you to use in assessing your information, getting knowledge, and making the right decisions. What's the output, guys? The output still remain same. Conduct procurement. That's number six. Part of what you do in execution was to plan procurement. What does it mean? It simply means you need to recruit vendors. Okay. You need to recruit vendors. We have said it that it is not every of your project you can do alone, not so. So there are some people you need in your project. So at this point, they will start submitting proposal. So now let's look at what are the tools and techniques we can use. The input still remains the same. Now tools and techniques. Expert judgment. We need guidance from experts, such as lawyers. What would they be doing for us? They are the ones that can draft an agreement between us and the vendor. So you involve them at that point. Are you seeing the tools, the techniques? Are you seeing it? We also need to advertise. Yes, we need to advertise before, because that's the only way they will know that we have something for them to do, not so. So when we advertise, there are two outcomes. We can advertise with the complete details of what we want them to come and do for us. And once we do that, it means those information the people, the vendors, we apply knowledgeably. What do we mean by knowledgeably? It means we are giving out the information of what they need to do for us. So if we give them that information, they will apply for that position with full interest. But sometimes, because of costs, we may not advertise everything. 
So we may just give some brief information in the advertisement. When you do this, you need to also make provision for another meeting. That meeting, when the vendors come, you will now tell them the full details of what you want them to do for you. Such meeting is what we call the BIDA conference. So now, when they submit their proposal, what happens? You need to do you need to do some data analysis. Data analysis such as what? Will these people, these people, yes, proposal evaluation. This person that is bringing this contract and um, that's that's coming to take this job, does he has does he have financial backing? Has he done similar projects? What is the outcome? So you begin to check all these things. You understand? If they are if they are fit for the job and so on. So you do technical evaluation. You check for their competency. You check their equipment as well. So everything it takes for them to do the work, you need to check. That is what we refer to as the data analysis. So at the end of the day, maybe you have 24 people who applied for that part of your project. You only have maybe five people who are qualified. So those five people who are qualified now becomes your bidders then your negotiation style still needs to come into play because you can still renegotiate, not so. So all these skills, all these interpersonal skills we are talking about, you use it in managing your project. What's the output, guys? The output is still, in this point, we have the selected sellers. We have an agreement, we have change requests, and of course. So at the end of the day, you have the sellers you want and you have selected them. So you can drop an agreement with them and so on. Yes. Okay. Did it come a little bit yes. I gave them an example of a project that has eight million in the in the project charter in the plan. The budget is eight million for the project. But along the line, we we'll find out that eight million will not be able to do that job because there are some aspects that we were not expecting that came in. So the part of those aspects now requires additional costs. You understand? So it is now appropriate for you because such change or such thing that has happened will make you not deliver on that date, on the schedule, and there's a cost implication. And the cost implication is three million. So you now write a change request for that. As you do that, the sponsor approved. Now, if you check your previous document, what is there? Eight million. So it needs to be up updated. You understand? And I also cited an example of a personal project. I'm still looking for a wife. So I went to the camp to look for a wife, but I did not get. You understand? So that's what it means about change request. So in your project, as you are going, there are some things that will come up that will require you to just change. You understand? So it's always an output. Uh, yes, always an output. You understand? What's the next one, guys? Manage communication. Now, pay attention to this because it's very important. At the end of the day, I will highlight what communication does. So in execution, you manage communication. It means you need to generate information about your work that is ongoing. So how do you put it? How do you put it that your stakeholders will understand? You distribute that information to your stakeholders so that you can also get feedback from them. Because when you send out information, what is expected? You expected, you expect feedback, not so. What's the input, guys? The input still remains the same. What are the tools and techniques? 
we have communication technology. So you can decide the type of communication technology you want to use, the interactive method, the push method, or the pull method. Your communication competence is also required. It's very important. Both verbal and written. You must always have a way of harvesting feedback from your team members or your stakeholders. You also need to pay attention to the non-verbal language of your team members or your stakeholders. There are some stakeholders that will come and say, look at this one. You think you know what you are doing, but they will not say it. The way they move, the way their eyes is. So you need to pay attention as the project manager. What are we doing? You are communicating. So once you notice such, you quickly find out their opinions. Get it from them. Once you see that, okay, they have a concern about something, you quickly try to correct it. So you need to pay attention to their non-verbal communication. You also need skills like presentation. Yes. If you are shy, if you have stage fright, if you know you cannot stand before the audience to speak, please, in that your form that you picked, there's what we call public speaking and presentation. Please be in the class. Because as a project manager, most of the time when you are passing information, you need to come and present it. You understand? Even when they have the reports, you need to explain it. You understand? So you need such skill as a project manager. Do you understand? Are we following? Are we together? Still on tools and techniques, when you are communicating, you also know how to prepare your project reports. Now, your company has standard of preparing a project report. Please, forget about your 2-1, forget about your first class. Once they employ you, once you get to that organization, what do you do? Just pick up their formats and use it. Don't worry, you forget about your results. They also have standard. But in a case where they don't have standard or where they don't have templates, what do you do? Just make sure whatever information you are communicating, everybody is carried along. It is very important. So when you're communicating, you also need to develop um, skill like listening. You need to listen. That's the only way you can provide help. You know, somebody is coming to you and is complaining. You need to listen. Sometimes if you don't listen, you don't get the real information. And that is the only way you can give them the information that they, they need. You must also be able to resolve conflicts. Are you seeing the tools and techniques? Because among your team members, there will be conflict among them. So how do you resolve it? How do you resolve it? How do you resolve it? It's a skill that you need. You understand? You must also be somebody who understands the cultural backgrounds of your stakeholders. I am building a house for, you may have a diversified project. As an architect that I am, I want to build a house for a Christian man. And at the end of the day, I put an inscription of the Quran. Is it making sense? I'm building for a Muslim man, and at the end of the day, I put an inscription of Jesus Christ. Does it make sense? So you need to understand their cultural background, the differences when you're making your communication. Networking is also very important so that you can be able to influence people. It is quite important. In your various CDS, in your various organizations, there are people who will tell you, see, I like this people do well, and they will back you. Have you seen such people? Such people have influence, like the celebrities we have. If one of them just say, okay, I think this bank is the best, 
you will see the followers will start. You understand? Also, the same thing with leadership, politicians. When they say this is good, this is good, you see some people will be following. You understand? So you need such. As a project manager, you need such. You need to be able to influence your people, your team members. Also, we have talked about meetings. Meeting is very, very important. It is key in managing our communication. Because when we come for meetings, people will be able to express their dissatisfaction and satisfaction. So those are the tools and techniques. What is the output, guys? The output still remains the same. Finally, oh, I think second to the last. Okay, there's implement read response, right? What are the inputs? What happens? What does this mean? It means you have already identified some risk in your projects. So now, what strategy are you using to solve those? Very good. So now let's look at. Okay. Sorry. So what are the tools and techniques, guys, for implementing risk response? We have expert judgment. Not so. So how are you going to do it? Are you going to escalate? Are you going to share the risk? Are you going to exploit? Are you going to enhance? I watched an Instagram video some time ago, and the woman was inside the car. She was holding a broken key. And she was saying, as you can see, Part of the key has broken inside the car. I want to come down and enter Keke and go home. I've called Oga to come and carry his car. <laughs> what has she done? She has abandoned the pro problem for her husband. So when you see risk, how do you do it? You share it, it's man's duty, you are going to do it. You understand? So those are one of the ways people share their risks. So whatever strategy you are using, Whenever there's weeks, please begin to activate it. What is the output, guys? Change request, project document is updated. We talked about the issue log, the lesson learned, project team as assignment, weeks register, weeks report is also done. Now the next one is to manage quality. I understand the fact that you guys need to do um, schedule, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, the next facilitator will come in so that you guys can take.